Hello and welcome to worship with members of Haywards Heath, Burgess Hill and Hurstpier Point Methodist Churches. My name is the Reverend Will Fletcher, the minister of those churches, and we meet today for our covenant service. For those who maybe haven't been part of a Methodist church before or have only recently become a member, you may not have come across this service before, but it dates right back to the earliest days of the Methodist movement in the 18th century. It is a service where we remember God's faithfulness and care for us, the covenant that God makes with us to be our God as he calls us to be his people. Is a chance to renew that covenant, to pray in the year to come that we may continue to be the people of God wherever that may lead. And so as we begin our covenant service, let us pray. O God, who continues to journey with us through all the paths of life, may your words, your grace, your spirit continue to encourage us to walk your way, to discover your life, to claim the joys of your covenant this day and always. Amen. And so we sing our opening hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. And so we come and hear our Bible readings for today, and the readings reflect the fact that the covenant that we remember and renew today is not original to us, but has been God's covenant with people right throughout all of time. And so we hear readings from various points in Scripture, and we begin with a reading from the law and the book of Deuteronomy chapter 29, beginning to read at verse 10. You stand assembled today, all of you, before the Lord your God. 
the leaders of your tribes, your elders and your officials, all the men of Israel, your children, your women and the aliens who are in your camp, both those who cut your wood and those who draw your water, to enter into the covenant of the Lord your God, sworn by an oath which the Lord your God is making with you today, in order that you may establish you today as his people, and that he may be your God, as he promised you, and as he swore to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I am making this covenant, sworn by an oath, not only with you who stand here with us today before the Lord our God, but also with those who are not here with us today. And we now hear a reading from the prophets and the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, beginning to read at verse 31. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and remember their sin no more. And we hear a reading from the epistles and Paul's epistle to the Romans, chapter 12, beginning to read at verse 1. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. And so we sing our next hymn, O Thou Who Camest From Above.
And now we come to a reading from the Gospels and we hear from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, beginning to read from verse 1. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations and reflections of all our hearts and minds Be guided by you, O God, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. As we look back over this last year since we renewed the covenant, would we class it as a successful year? I guess it depends very much on our definition of success. Across our three congregations, we have welcomed new people into our church family whilst at the same time said farewell to some much-loved members. We have seen new people take on roles, be involved in leading worship, and many others have faithfully continued in roles of service, mission and ministry. New initiatives and activities have begun or are on the cusp of beginning. Yet we may still feel as though we have not been successful, maybe compared to others. How about you as an individual? As you look back at this last year of trying to follow Jesus, how successful do you feel you have been? Have you learnt anything new, grown in some way, discovered a new gift? Does it feel as though not much has changed? Are you tempted to look at others? and feel as though you are not as good as them. Well, let me reassure you, the fact you are here and still on the journey is a success to celebrate. As Jesus began his ministry, setting out his and God's vision for the world, he lists those who are particularly blessed by God. It wasn't the wealthy, or the powerful, or the famous. It wasn't the leaders, the knowledgeable, or the influential. Instead, it was precisely those who didn't feel particularly blessed, or those judged by society as not being the successful ones. It was the poor in spirit, those who mourn, the peacekeepers, those who hunger for righteousness, those who show mercy, those who are persecuted. For we must learn that God's upside-down values, or to be more precise, his right-way-up values, in contrast to the world's upside-down values, place far greater emphasis on those who feel that they have lost out in life. It is amongst them that God's presence is particularly found. In this truth is the good news that discovering God and even experiencing the blessing of God's love isn't based on our external circumstances, but on being open to recognising God in our midst 
whatever our life looks or feels like, and however it is judged by others. As we come and renew our covenant with God, we do so in response to God's love and grace that always goes before us. We commit to ourselves to seek to be more the people of God that God calls us to be, and not to judge ourselves, both as a church and as individuals, by worldly standards of how much we have, how successful we seem, how we compare to other people. Instead, we recommit to seek God whatever life throws at us. It certainly is not the case that God desires or plans for any of us to suffer, but it is true that God's strength, God's blessing, God's love can't be contained by any struggle or trial. So today, remember God's faithfulness and promise to be with you along each step of the way. Respond to that grace by beginning the next stage of the journey with God, open to discovering God in every scene of life until we reach journey's end. Amen. And so as we prepare to come and renew that covenant, we sing once more a hymn that has been linked with the covenant service going right back to those early days of the Methodist movement. Come, let us use the grace divine. And so we come to our time to renew the covenant. We begin with a short introduction before we come to our prayers of confession. I invite you to join in the words in bold type. God made a covenant with the people of Israel, calling them to be a holy nation, chosen to bear witness to his steadfast love by finding delight in the law. The covenant was renewed in Jesus Christ, our Lord, in his life, work, death and resurrection. In him all people may be set free from sin and its power and united in love and obedience. In this covenant, God promises us new life in Christ. For our part, we promise to live no longer for ourselves, but for God. We meet, therefore, as generations have met before us, to renew the covenant which bound them 
and binds us to God. Let us then seek forgiveness for the sin by which we have denied God's claim upon us. Let us pray. God of mercy, hear us as we confess our sins. For the sin that has made us slow to learn from Christ, reluctant to follow him and afraid to bear the cross, Lord have mercy, Lord forgive. For the sin that has caused the poverty of our worship, the formality and selfishness of our prayers, our neglect of fellowship and the means of grace, and our hesitating witness for Christ, Lord have mercy, Lord forgive. For the sin that has led us to misuse your gifts, evade our responsibilities and fail to be good stewards of your creation, Lord have mercy, Lord forgive. For the sin that has made us unwilling to overcome evil with good, tolerant of injustice, quick to condemn and selfish in sharing your love with others, Lord have mercy, Lord forgive. Have mercy on me, O God, in your constant love. In the fullness of your mercy, blot out my offences, wash away all my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Give me the joy of your help again and strengthen me with a willing spirit. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, to all who truly repent, this is his gracious word. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God. Sisters and brothers in Christ, let us again accept our place within this covenant, which God has made with us and with all who are called to be Christ's disciples. This means that by the help of the Holy Spirit, we accept God's purpose for us and the call to love and serve God in all our life and work. Christ has many services to be done. Some are easy, others are difficult. Some bring honour, others bring reproach. Some are suitable to our natural inclinations and material interests, others are contrary to both. In some we may please Christ and please ourselves. In others we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Yet the power to do all these things is given to us in Christ who strengthens us. Therefore let us make this covenant of God our own. Let us give ourselves to him, trusting in his promises and relying on his grace. Eternal God, in your faithful and enduring love, you call us to share in your gracious covenant in Jesus Christ. In obedience we hear and accept your commands. In love we seek to do your perfect will. With joy we offer ourselves anew to you. We are no longer our own, but yours. I am no longer my own, but yours. Your will, not mine, be done in all things, wherever you may place me, in all that I do and in all that I may endure, when there is work for me and when there is none, when I am troubled and when I am at peace. Your will be done when I am valued and when I am disregarded, when I find fulfilment and when it is lacking, when I have all things and when I have nothing. I willingly offer 
all I have and am to serve you as and where you choose. Glorious and blessed God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. May it be so forever. Let this covenant now made on earth be fulfilled in heaven. Amen. And so having renewed the covenant, a covenant that God makes with all the world, we come and pray for God's church and world. Using those phrases from the gospel reading that we heard today, there is a response when I say the words, God of blessing, I invite you to join in the response, nourish our world. God of blessing, nourish our world. So let us pray. Blessed are the poor in spirit. We pray for those who have a low estimation of themselves, those who are often ignored or avoided by others. God of blessing, nourish our world. Blessed are those who mourn. We pray for all those who have loved and lost, whether they mourn the death of a person, a dream, or a sense of who they could be or once were. God of blessing, nourish our world. Blessed are the meek and merciful. We pray for those who devote their lives to serving others, in hospitals, in care homes, through volunteering, by caring for family members or neighbours. God of blessing, nourish our world. Blessed are those who hunger for righteousness. We pray for your church around the world. May we not set ourselves up as those who have made it, but always be pilgrims seeking to discover more. God of blessing, nourish our world. Blessed are the pure in heart. We pray for ourselves and pray that we may become more like you throughout our lives. God of blessing, nourish our world. Blessed are the peacemakers. In a world riven by conflict, dominated by supposed strong men, we pray for those who often work behind the scenes fostering dialogue, building bridges, believing in reconciliation, not annihilation. God of blessing, nourish our world. Blessed are those who are persecuted. We pray for those parts of our family around the world who are persecuted for speaking of your love and worshipping your name. God of blessing, nourish our world. All these prayers we offer through Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And so as we have reflected on God's covenant with us, an invitation to journey with God, we sing our final hymn, Come with me, come wander, come welcome the world. Baby! 
So may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love, living and departed, this day and forevermore. Amen.